Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there, welcome back. You, can you see this headline? Oh, this is so creepy. Isn't this crazy? And, and let me just do a quick check. Okay, we're looking good. Um, yeah, Alexa tells a 10-year-old girl to touch live plug with a penny? You know, this it's, it's shocking, but it doesn't surprise me with AI and knowing that entities can manipulate these energies and use them. Uh, it doesn't surprise me, but it's still shocking because, wow, I mean, I've never liked Alexa, and I hope that doesn't go down on my social credit score, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, right? So Amazon has updated its Alexa voice assistant after it challenged a 10-year-old girl to touch a coin to the prongs of a half-inserted plug. The suggestion came after the girl asked Alexa for a challenge to do. And Alexa replied, plug in a phone charger about halfway into a wall outlet, then touch a penny to the exposed prongs. Oh my gosh. Wow. What? <clears throat> what? You know, that that's insane. But what also is insane, but not really, is um, this morning, like, we had up a certain messaging part of our phone and then walked away and looked back at it and something else was up a different message came in from a family member and Cindy actually watched it scroll it like so somebody was reading the message which we know they do mm -hmm. there you have no privacy in this world all the technology that we see is the technology of the system and it does have an ulterior purpose. It's not just to make our lives more convenient. Mm -hmm. It's to know exactly what you're doing every second of the day. Right. It's simply a nice thought that they are wanting to make our lives more convenient. But no, I was looking right at the message thing and the darn thing just as I was reading it scrolled up on its own. It's crazy. And it happened to be a family member that sent a message just to let us know, oh, we're getting rid of our smartphones. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is the message that they, they sent us. They said, we're getting rid of our smartphones. We're going to get a cheap burner. Um, and we just wanted to let you know in mm -hmm. case you can't like get in contact with us for a little bit. So, yeah, somebody else found that was a very interesting message. Yeah, yeah, they wanted to help us read it. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, when I was making the last video, then uh, there was a call in from a mysterious number that seems to call, you know, often. R numbers really close to this number. You know, it's, it's part of the world that we're in. Yeah, there was a... I, th I don't know if it was the Mayans that spoke about at the end of this age, the technology would turn on us. Mm -hmm. Te the technology would be used against uh, humanity. I'm trying to remember, I know it was a Mesoamerican people. I, I forget if it was the Mayans that brought that up. But think about this too, because when we're talking AI, you know, we do not believe, this is our personal opinion, that AI has our best interest in mind. Just saying. Right. <laughs> Great Plains aquifers are disappearing. That's not good. If we lose these aquifers, we lose about 20% of the world's grain crop. More than 40% of the U.S.'s beef production. And about 40% of vegetables, nuts, and fruits consumed in the U.S. As you know, the drought rolls on. And as this goes on, says the next disaster coming to the Great Plains is currently playing. Acute scarcity drives the search for water underground, but the West major aquifers are in trouble too. Century after the Dust Bowl, another environmental catastrophe is coming. To the high plains of western Kansas, signs are subtle but unequivocal. Dry riverbeds, fields of sand, and the sound of irrigation motors straining to pump from dwindling aquifers. This is huge. Now, again, we know that there is geo mm -hmm. engineering. That's a reality. And we even know that some states are, you know, trying to see clouds. And it, if this was done on a massive scale, without a doubt, you know, we, we could change things quickly if there was really that will. But even, even bigger than that is getting in tune with Mother Nature. Uh, just like basically the indigenous people across the globe were. 
this system has disconnected us from Mother Nature, even made us afraid of Mother Nature. Oh, it has. In yeah. so many ways. And, and that's why we're always harping on this. You know, it's that belief set that you, you can't pray to Mother, you can only pray to Father. Yeah. You know, it's, it's such a disconnect on every level. If we were connected to the Mother energies, the world would be a totally different place. And we would be in a harmonious relationship with our environment. We've been purposefully disconnected from the environment. And here you see a bird flu outbreak in Israel kills 5,000 cranes and sparks the slaughter of half a million chickens at a time when obviously the food supply is, is already being strained. And you know again, the guides were again telling us this morning, uh, you know, to really prepare for a period of time in which you may not be able to even leave your house. Um, so you have to be prepared for that type of situation. I know some people have faced that in different countries with, with the uh, L-O-C-K down that has been ongoing. It's been very different in, in different places. You know, when we were in Nevada, you know, it wasn't so bad, uh, honestly, you know, and, and then we went to... Um, Arizona was a mixed bag. It depended on where you were in Arizona. Some parts seemed normal, other parts, you know, seemed, you know, again, one person in, one person out, uh, even checking your temps in certain places. Um, every place is a little different. Texas, very free, you know, in comparison. This is a time period where we want to make sure that we are prepared for anything that comes. And the flu is making a comeback in the U.S. As after it took a year off last year. And we're just going to leave that at that. Just leave that, it right that, there. Right we're there. having a hard enough time getting stuff up. Now, you know, I, I had a, a dream last night uh, which made me check the earthquake map. I usually do check the, you know, the quakes mm -hmm. to see, although we do have family members that are always letting us know, too. Hey, hey, you, you know, this happened, that happened. Um but you know this was interesting because this is columbia south carolina and i still have um, friends and family in this area and i actually had a dream about a major quake happening in this area now these are not major quakes but uh 3.3 2.5 2.1 and 1.7 four quakes is kind of curious over here now there is a major fault down around charleston and you can't have quakes over here um and I would not be surprised if we had a major quake in the Charleston area, um, you know, it, within the next handful of years. Again, X marks the spot. It feels to me like we're getting a message from certain entities with those two uh, eclipses, 2017 mm -hmm. of August, August 2017, I should say, and April of 2024. Uh, which intersect right at the New Madrid, and I do feel that if the New Madrid went you know, you wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see the energy transfer and trigger a major quake in the Charleston area, which did have a, a quake that was over seven. And because it's all sand, it actually caused a liquefaction. And uh, there's a church in Charleston on Church Street that's uh, famously tilted. The steeple is actually still t tilted to this day after, I think it was 1880, 1884, the great quake down there. So, you know, just something to watch. And, uh, you know, our, our friends in that area did feel it. Mm -hmm. They did. Winter storms leave thousands without power in the Pacific Northwest and Canada records negative 51 Celsius. Meanwhile, you know, I'm not wearing a shirt. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're both, we're I, both I've, comfortable. I've been in shorts uh, and that's it for days it's been like summer well with Micah it's no big deal now when you see me in a tank top then it's like then it's comfortable because I am so temperature um, sensitive when I'm comfortable then things are great well that's true because I, I did this in New Mexico when it was yeah. like 50 degrees inside the cabin yeah he has a little thicker skin yeah so but you know the records they just in incredible look at that um, it's just the extremes are just just so incredibly extreme. And, you know, to me it feels like Mother Earth wants to do something and technology is trying to do something else. 
Well, when you talk in terms of alignment and vibration, you know, everything wants to move back to its natural alignment and vibration. And sometimes things want to come back into their alignment so badly, weird things can happen to kind of make, make that alignment occur. So I'm not surprised that she's, you know, up and down and pretty moody. Mm, absolutely. Meanwhile, we have a new December snow record, 193.7 inches, could go over 200 inches. And you know this is uh, the Central Sierra area. Just amazing what we're seeing now. That's that's actually you know good news because eventually that'll translate into some water in an mm -hmm. area that needs it desperately. Mm -hmm. Look at that! I mean, <laughs> look at that graph. It's just it's launching into space uh, like yeah, one of Elon Musk's satellites. Not even slowing down. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just the, what we're seeing, the record snowfall also in Japan, also in Korea, too. Um, you have people being, you know, stuck and not being able to either get home or get to work. 78.7 inches in some areas. Just incredible. Obviously, very hazardous conditions. And meanwhile, in Brazil, in Bahia, you have tremendous flooding causing catastrophic damage. How many bridges have we seen since 2017 just cut in half? Oh, so many, so many. How many, how many, uh, you know, towns just underwater? Mm -hmm. You can't see the street. You know, we used to joke about getting boats. Well, now we do have two kayaks. Yeah, we do, yeah, you we're know, ready. Just in case, you mm -hmm. know, we're, we're pulling the kayaks out and uh, putting the dogs in them and we'll paddle off. We're prepared. A lot more activity all over the place as far as volcanic activity, as you see here at major unrest level over in Vanuatu at Ambe. Um, we have Cindy's favorite, favorite oh, I love volcano. this word, Fagradasifal Jal. It's amazing. I, didn't, I do it so good every time. When I married her, I didn't know she could speak Icelandic. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, a gift, I guess. It just comes out so natural. Well, surface deformation, which resembled a pre-eruption state. So, yeah, be aware. We could have a lot more activity going on over there in Iceland. And we have a little bit more um, activity going on over here as, as we see some flares here peeking over into the M-class. And, uh, you know, over here, the KP index has been rolling up to around 4, 3, 4. Could increase. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, we have Israel launching a massive attack on a Syrian port. And, you know, I didn't pull up. An, there was an article um, on Southfront, which covers everything military, too, talking about... Maybe I should just pull it up after this. Mm -hmm. Um... You know, massive Israeli attack here. Multiple Israeli missiles erupting huge fireballs, massive damage, with the blaze appearing to burn into the morning and even the afternoon hours of Tuesday. Syrian state Sana described that at around 3.21 a.m., the Israeli enemy carried out an aerial aggression with several missiles from the direction of the Mediterranean, targeting the container yard, right, in a port. Damage was done to a nearby hospital as well it's you know it's just fascinating that when it comes to Israel striking it never seems like much ever happens in retaliation mm -hmm. you know you get some some rockets that might be launched I think times are changing though times are changing as you see fires burning out of control look at that all those containers going up in flames right mm-hmm now there is a major Russian air base 12 miles to the south of this port and there's a video here too where you can actually see cruise missile impacts. This is a lot more dangerous. Um, I mean it's horrible. It's horrible and there's non-stop war going on on, in, on this planet. As you see here this article of Russian warplanes take to the skies across Syria a very, very different world could be in front of us if Russia and Israel go into direct confrontation, which this is the point I'm trying to get to. Um, because things are different now. Things are very different. You know, so this, you have Russian strikes going on in areas very close to where this Israeli strike happened. 
So, you know, again, we're looking to the Ukraine, but, it, you know, things could start here. They could, you know, and it's just another one of those things where we've got to keep an eye on and send out the positive energy so that I just, you know, people makes me so sad when these things happen because people just like me and you are the ones that are paying for all of this. It's horrible. So, yeah, I'm sure that the official explanation is going to be that there's weapons and things like that in there. But, you know, did, did food, medical supplies get destroyed now, too? And, again, it's always just the average civilians of the world that pay the price. Yep. And we have a jet bursting into flames after crashing in a California neighborhood. This is in San Diego County. Um, and it actually caused a power outage, too. Uh, they don't know what took it down at this point. Another sad situation. I think we... Gosh, I... I read this and I thought, is this the one that they were talking about that happened like a week ago or so? Because I feel like there was one that happened like a week earlier in the same area. Gets me wondering about, again, you know, because the proximity to military bases right. and, and odd technologies that's out there. There's a lot of, you know, technologies that will be revealed shortly that most people are not aware of. Yeah, technologies that might go from the ground up and also from up to the ground, something sweeping maybe. China complains about near misses with SpaceX satellites. Beijing says that Elon Musk's Starlink satellites pass dangerously close to its manned space missions, endangering the lives of its astronauts. Well, yeah, maybe they should really go and you know, broach that subject with the AGG. Yeah, exactly. You know, Elon, he likes to go back and forth to Mars all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And he's, you know, many people have said, is he really human? N n no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the bottom line. And there will be no more NATO expansion. And this is a, a statement coming um, from the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister. We cannot tolerate NATO expansion. We will not just prevent it, we will put a stop to it. So, you know, again, Ukraine is, is the hot point, but you know it does take into mind other countries that we had mentioned uh, earlier in the week. Meanwhile, China made up the world's first artificial intelligence equipped judge. It gives 97% of the decisions right. But is it going to tell little girls to go stick their fingers in light sockets? Exactly. I mean, this is really actually very serious. It might, it might be funny, but what the heck? This is pretty bad. It is, it is, and it, and it shows the way things are going. And we cannot put blind trust in anything or anybody. That looks like reddish-orange hair, does it not? It sure does. It sure does. Mm -hmm. well, this is the mummy of Pharaoh Amenhotep I. And, of course, uh, Robert Seffer of Lantern Gardens, he, he does a lot to talk about exactly who the royalty of for instance, Egypt really was. You know, who were these people? Where did they come from? Did they come from Atlantis? Uh, did they come from, you know, exactly this, these societies that disintegrated in the collapse of Atlantis and spread out all over the place? You know, because you would imagine, you know, not you wouldn't necessarily imagine the rulers of Egypt having you know red hair and blue eyes. Mm -mm. But wouldn't you know, so. a lot of the th a lot of the things we have been taught are not accurate. No, they're not, and they're having to rewrite these science books. I mean, over and over and over. Thank goodness for digital times. At least it makes it easier on them. So this is pretty cool, actually. You know, it, it just basically is able to go right through without opening up the sarcophagus. Nice. Um, so he had a 21 year rule, but he died at 35. So he started his rule at 14. Wow. Conducted several military campaigns as well, and apparently uh, died of injuries or illness. But it's interesting. You know, I hope that we are able to uncover so many of the mysteries before. You know, things are just uh, destroyed. And when we look to the wars that ha have been happening in the Middle East, and there's a big purpose there for these wars. Obviously, natural resources, but mm -hmm. part of it, too, is to cover up stuff. Mm -hmm. Cover up, you know, evidence of uh, ETs. To cover up evidence of past highly advanced technological societies. 
and uh, you know to get rid of all traces of anything that could also show us you know who the real controllers really are I know it's like something that we really deserve to have a deeper understanding and then you know then I just feel like if we know where we have been we know more about where we're going yeah you know and this may not even be here but it's just interesting how many mummies we've uncovered in certain places um, that defy expectations you know and when we look to the Black Sea area which is a, a hot military topic right now we find these elongated skulls with red hair we find them down in Peru too very very curious and then we look to this the Sumerian stories and legends and, and things start to make sense you add in the stories that we get from the different indigenous cultures around the world that talk about the fact that you know there are these beings that come from the sky and and sometimes war in the sky over their head now some of that could be just simply other civilizations that are here on the planet and have been on the planet for a very long time mm -hmm inside the earth you know think in terms of agartha shambhala shangri-la um telos you know uh and others and in the oceans too we could think of uh, dagon we could think of uh, oans and all these other legends and myths as well fascinating stuff all will be revealed in due time and there's always the akashic records and remote viewing to to reveal it for yourself oh, as yeah, well yeah fun stuff so we want to thank everybody for your support on Ko-Fi and also on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you. And also medicinal foods. Make sure you use the coupon code EEA and get a discount. And also it supports the channel. As always, source bless and namaste. Namaste.